Welcome back. Joining me now is Nicholas St. John, who's the author of The Immunity Crisis in America. So you can get a copy of this where? Well, I'll have them where I'm speaking this Saturday at 4 p.m. at the North Rock Road Natural Grocers, and I'll okay. have them for sale there. Otherwise, you can get them digitally on my website, info, uh, I'm sorry, immunitycrisis.info. Okay. And also, we want to mention that at the bottom of that, there's a link called uh, Newsletter. Ah. And people can sign up. I'm starting to generate newsletters for okay. people. So like articles like I've written here about the anatomy of a flu shot, mm -hmm. they'll be able to get those as I publish those and do you know, like the videos here every week. Mm -hmm. And then we'll send those out on topics that I cover. Okay. Well, you know, we've, we've talked quite a bit about the anatomy of the flu shot, and we talked about the uh, efficacy of it. Right. Now, I think what we want to talk about is what you can do instead of. Right, right. So, I think, you know, it's funny, there's a lot of people who are anti-vaxxers. Don't get the vaccine, don't get the vaccine, don't get the vaccines. And I understand their point of view from it because they, they believe that there are some inherent risks with taking it. Mm -hmm. I think the criminal part of that is telling you not to get it and not giving you an alternative way to strengthen your immune system so that it isn't detrimental even should you be exposed to the illnesses and viruses and bacteria, whatever it is that they're trying to immunize you against. Right. And so in my immunity crisis in America, I point that out. I talk about all these different diseases and how serious some of them are, like MRSA. 90,000 people get in infected a year, mm -hmm. 19,000 die. Wow. Really? That's a 21% mortality rate. So you could go in for a simple operation or something like that, go to the hospital, end up contracting MRSA, and 21% of those leave through the morgue, not through the front door. Oh, wow. So, yeah. we've got, so we need to know how to strengthen our immune system to get over that. Uh -huh. And while the, the crisis with Ebola is waning down, there's just been a few new cases in the last uh, few weeks, the problem is that no one's testing. Why? You know, they 75% of them die from the infection once they come into the tents and get confirmed that they have Ebola. Where are the tests being done on the 25% who survive? What is it about those 25% versus the 75% who died? Mm -hmm. And yet we're not seeing any information on that. Hmm. So how do you know how to? Mm -hmm. get through something as serious as Ebola. So, although a common cold isn't considered as serious, right. uh, you don't know what it is. Most viral infections, whether it's the uh, norovirus, which is the uh, a rhinovirus, which is a common cold, and then we have, you know, a slew of them. Uh, influenza virus, and we've got, you know, A and B, and then, of course, all these others, enterovirus. You never know which one you have, right. and you never know how severe it's going to be. And so while you could let it run its course, the question is, why would we and risk it being something more severe? And the case in point is enterovirus D68. It seems to attack children. They seem to be more susceptible to this virus. Mm -hmm. And it has what's called accelerated encephalitis. So you think your child of six years old is fine. No, it's just a flu. We'll just let it run its course or it's a cold. They go to bed. To date, six children have not woken up in the morning. Wow. That's, it, it's accelerated encephalitis. So we can let it run its course, but why would we risk that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so some of the things you can do, of course, I'm a big proponent of sodium ascorbate, vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Now, m my stand on it, and a lot of guys now are picking up on this, and of course this isn't new, you know, Dr. Klenner and Pauling and Cothcard and Stone, I mean, the list goes on, mm -hmm. of people who said, look, you should be getting uh, about 30 milligrams per pound of body weight. Now that's not just an arbitrary number. Those are numbers that when you look at mammals that can create their own, like guinea pigs, the guinea pig will create, if they're not sick, about the equivalence of 900 milligrams for an adult, uh, for an adult male, hmm. 900. Our RDA is 90. Oh, wow. So yeah. <laughs> when you start, and then when they get sick, that thing can go to as high as 10 and 15,000 milligrams that the guinea pig manufactures on its own because they have the right enzymes and everything they can make. We can't make our own. So when we get sick, 
it needs to, we need to amp up how much we're getting. Mm -hmm. So again, the, the typically it's five thousand to six thousand. If you're well, mm -hmm. if you're sick, it could be three times that or more. All right. So vitamin C, um, Sambacol. I'm big on Sambacol. I, I'm sorry, I'm bringing the box, but Sambacol. Everyone should have a box of Sambacol, both in their desk at work and at the medicine cabinet at home. Now, if you have children, get the, the syrup because they like the syrup a lot better. And now there's even gummies out. Oh, yeah? So if oh, you don't like either one of those, <laughs> get the gummies. But this stuff is great. It's called l sambucus nigra is the uh, amino acid enzyme that inhibits the spikes on most H, H and N type viruses from being able to attach to a cell. If it can't attach to the cell, it can't replicate. Uh -huh. Okay, and so it's proven to be five times more effective than Tamiflu. Five really? times. Really? That's... And it's a fifth of the cost. Yeah. So it's five times and more effective. And it's over the counter. And it's, yeah, <laughs> no doctor visit. Yeah. No prescription needed. It's 50 cents a tablet, whereas Tamiflu is $4. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't just buy one tablet at a time. It's like $125 for a prescription. Yeah. Whether you use all of it or not. And then, of course, the doctor visit, which is time and money. And so you get rid of that. You can go to, you know... Go to any of the health food stores, Green Acres, uh, Whole Foods, uh, Walgreens, C, uh, CVS, uh, mm -hmm. any of those, and get this stuff. Now, you may at uh, Walgreens and CVS, you may have to ask for it. And then finally is vitamin D, D3. When we're not out in the sun, because that's when the sun hits our mm -hmm. skin, it uh, metabolizes and creates vitamin D in our level. We should be between 70 and 90 when you take your blood test. Most of us are nowhere near that. Even with someone who's conscious of it, mm -hmm. I was taking 6,000 milligrams a day, and I own a convertible, which means I was getting plenty of sun when I'm out. I was still only at 34. Now I'm getting ready to go do tests again, so we'll mm -hmm. see what. But I've been taking 20,000 milligrams a day. We take 10. Okay, 10. Yeah. That's that's really good because mm -hmm. again, when you get outside, of, most people could take five with really no problems. There is a there is apparently a limit. And I don't know what the toxicity or what the negative effects are, but most of us are so deficient in D that we could easily take 10, 15, 20,000 for several months mm -hmm. and not ever reach that level. We're just so deficient in it. So well, it, especially this time of year. Right. Yeah. So the three things are increase your vitamin C levels to five to 6,000 milligrams a day. Get some Sambacol. So the first instance you see a cold or flu, you can start taking this. And then, of course, increase your levels to uh, vitamin D by taking um, five, 10,000 milligrams a day. Mm -hmm. So that really will help you uh, do that. So, um, and I'll be speaking more on this again uh, on... Saturday at 4 p.m. at Natural Grocers on North Rock Road. So come on out and join us. It's a lot of fun. We have a lot of interaction, and uh, uh, you'll learn something. So I think that's neat because that way people can ask questions. Right, yeah, it's very interactive. And we'll be back.